Or you could tweet out Wittertainment. There are a number of ways oh, of telling us. I thought us. it was. Well, OK, well, I'm just trying to smooth it over. OK. Uh, OK, so uh, that will be an ongoing process as we move on. Just an email about uh, Herzog from Ian in Birmingham. Simon and Mark uh, had the good fortune to see Werner Herzog's Into the Abyss a couple of weeks ago at Birmingham's fantastic Flat Pack Festival. I was a tad apprehensive due to the comparisons with In Cold Blood, one of my favourite novels. Worried that Werner would not live up to that high standard. I'm relieved to say I was very impressed. I think Herzog did a very good job of telling a story that is heartbreakingly tragic from every angle and does this in a compelling and well-balanced way, despite clearly stating his position at the beginning of the film, uh, i.e. against the death penalty. Yeah. However, in a few instances, I do think he got confused between focusing on the specific details of one story and trying to make broader comments about capital punishment and, and of life and death. In particular, I think the introduction of the wife, which you mentioned uh, in the interview towards the end, was mishandled. I don't think it's possible to draw solid conclusions about the issue of the death penalty from just one case study. What did you think? Um, I thought the film was extraordinarily well-balanced. I do think that Herzog is a really unique filmmaker. He is, a, you know, because he's somebody who came out of feature films and then... I mean, he's always made documentaries, but he's now probably more famous for his documentaries than for his features. I mean, in, in the past, it would be Fitzcarraldo, that's what you think of, you know, an Aguirre, Wrath of God, and perhaps the documentary Burden of Dreams, which he didn't make, but of course it's about him making Fitzcarraldo. And these are epic visions of, you know, the, the classic Herzog epic vision would be one man against the world, somebody with a particular take on the world, going against ridiculous odds to fulfil their dream and that's why Fitzcarraldo is the kind of classic example because of course what Herzog did in physically dragging the boat over the hill in order to tell the story of Fitzcarraldo is just that now I think if you ask people about Herzog they'll, they'll cite Grizzly Man they'll cite um, you know they'll cite Into the Abyss which again was overlooked by the Academy because the Academy really cannot the Academy's documentary category the American Academy documentary category is all over the place I mean you only have to look at the fact that Senna wasn't even nominated and I think we all know just how great of a documentary that mm -hmm. was um, in the case of Into the Abyss and of course there is an associated television series as well in which he's you know looking at the death row which I haven't seen um I just feel that he is somebody who he, uh, there's something about his his line of investigation which is it's always slightly left of center. He comes he comes for example in that interview saying I was suddenly compelled to ask this pastor the question about meeting a squirrel. And you know, and then there is this story about about meeting the squirrel, which suddenly opens up this whole area. From did you, what, did you want to hear a clip? Okay, yes. yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. Here's that bit. Okay. Please describe an encounter with a squirrel. An encounter with a squirrel. I was driving the golf cart, and I was on the go on the cart path, and I saw two squirrels. Uh, they were chasing each other, and as I was getting closer, they were running across the cart path, and I put on my brakes, and they stopped in the middle of the cart path and looked at me. And I said, how about this? If I wouldn't have stopped, I could have run over one of these squirrels. Their life would have ended. And that reminds me. The many people that I have been with on their last breath of life. And due to bad choices and mistakes out of their life, they, their life is taken away. In the moment. So life is precious, whether it's a squirrel or a human being. And what's what's amazing about that clip is, as Vernon said in the interview, you, he, he find, so there's the real that's the pastor, you know, the heart of the pastor. He said he looked into the heart of the man, yeah. and it came about because of Vernon's apparently absurd question about yeah. tell me well, about an encounter with a squirrel. But that's it. The absurd thing is is crucial to this, and I know because the subject matter is so serious, because the subject matter is so absolutely deadpan. It's you might shy away from from talking about it in, in, in absurdist terms, but Herzog seems to have the ability to look at the world. In all its complexity, he keeps talking about looking at the heart of the man, looking into the abyss. He keeps talking about that thing about the ecstatic truth. And this is his great thing, is the search for ecstatic truth, which is the truth which transcends that which is apparent, whether it's in Cave of Forgotten Dreams, looking at these old uh, cave drawings and imagining the culture that produced them, or whether it's in the case of Grizzly Man, which is basically looking through the video notebooks of somebody who is gone and kind of re you know, reconfigure their life, the whole thing about Timothy Treadwell and how he was out of sync with the world and how he ended up meeting such a 
terrible end. And there is an absurdist strain in this, and not absurdist comic, although, of course, there's so much of what, 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 what Herzog does is so engaging because his voice is this ex- extraordinary mix of... I mean, you heard it there in that interview. On the one hand, it's lyrical and lilting. On the other hand, it's stern. It seems to be... He just... He does seem to be... And I've interviewed him several times, as have you. I've seen pretty much every one of his films. You, He does seem to be able to look into the heart of a, of a subject. And I think in the case of this, it is very, very evenly balanced. Talking to the people who have had some sense of closure from the death penalty at the same time as accepting that he does not believe in the death penalty. And I, I obviously over here we don't have the death penalty, and I think that the majority of the audience you know, would, would be broadly... Set. I mean, my own feeling is that when you make a film about the death penalty... Uh, an intelligent audience will, broadly speaking, not feel that... I'm sorry, that is an assumption that I'm making, but I I would assume that actually most people would feel that same way. But what he doesn't attempt to do is to pretend that there are, that terrible crimes and senseless crimes have not been committed and that there, and that you ha- there is a place for those people who say, it brought me closure. And I think what he does is deceptive in that it may seem sometimes that he's not he's, he's not getting to the heart of me he's not asking tough questions but that's always been Herzog's way one of the things that he does when he meets his interviewers he actually says very specifically I'm not here to talk about you know whether you do, but I don't have to like you and I think that's you know that's a very Herzog thing to do he's brutally honest but he's but he somehow he finds a way into the heart of a subject through these completely strange, completely tangential ways. When he makes his feature film, suddenly there'll be the cutaways to the crocodile and the cutaways to the alligators. And you think, what is all that about? But There, aren't, his... there aren't many flights of fancy like that. There's nothing really surreal in No, this no, film. but th- there's not surreal, but that sense of absurdity, of the absurdity of existence and therefore the, the vibrance of existence. I mean, it, there is something... I'm sorry, I, I, there's no way of doing this without sounding incredibly pretentious but hey there is something metaphysical about his filmmaking and I think that he takes the subject very very seriously and I cannot imagine that anyone would watch that film and not be engaged not be moved and not come out of it thinking that's that awful subject matter of the death penalty and of a senseless death has at least been addressed by somebody who understands the significance of it but has not been overawed but has not been put on the back foot and given the inability to make a film. Did you like it? Uh, yes, and here's the thing. How many hours... This is, he, said, uh, yeah. he, he said after the show, so the film's about an hour and a half, something like that, yeah. hour and 40 minutes. How many hours did he assemble it from? How many hours did he shoot in total for well, this film? Well, he said that he didn't have very, very many hours, didn't you? Four. Well, there we go. But can you... Is, is no, there I know. Find me anybody else who in those four hours would have got those he, answers. He so there's, there's virtually nothing else. So that, so that the main interviews that you see with the pastor he had for 25 minutes, never met him before, never saw him again afterwards. The guys on, uh, who are in prison, he had for 50 minutes. That's it. That's it, uh, yeah. And then there's the death row captain and there's the, there's the wife of one of the, uh, one of the guild. And so four hours of footage, and he's turned it into a pretty remarkable hour and a half. I, I, I think, you know, I genuinely think he's somebody who straddles the, 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 the divide between documentary and drama. The, as I said, I think now he will be, because of course the Oscar nomination was for Encounter at the End of the World, which is a drama, but you watched it, you, it was a documentary, you watch Herzog's documentaries, you never feel like, oh, that was somehow a different beast to the dramas. They, the two things have melded into each other. He is an extraordinary character. His films, his body of work, there's a box set that I, he, he gave me a, a while ago with his documentary works put, put together. And honestly, you could just, you could get lost in there. He is a man who is who has looked the abyss in the face. You know that old Nietzsche quote about, um, you know, he who looks long into the abyss, you should be careful because you, when you look long into the abyss, the abyss looks back into you. I get the feeling the abyss looks back into Werner Herzog and goes, blimey. Yes, he, he said, he said uh, <laughs> elsewhere in the interview, uh, I'm, not as, I'm not afraid of anybody. Cause he's no, he's not these, afraid of these, anything. These killers. He's and not no. afraid of anything. He is genuinely unafraid. He picked the right crime, I think. I did ask him whether he heard about this story and then wanted to make the film or whether he looked for a film where there was no doubt. So it wasn't an issue of these guys didn't do it. No, no, no. There is absolutely, you know, everybody accepts that they did exactly what they did. And then because of the... Ne- the Although the they're whole... trying to blame each other. and you know, yes, there is, but, exactly. but yes, no, it's, and as he said, the, 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 this, this terrible, senseless awfulness of that crime is never, is never in any way. Of course, that's what it is. And inspired by our interview with Tom Wilkerson, Mark Strong has this idea where Tom was talking 